putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Kevin Jackson here. We got a lot to cover because, I look, I, how many stories we got left? Like seven just for the day? How many did we have yes, the other day? How many did we have left over? Like four? Holy God. You know what I love about that, though? It means that we are so prepared for this show. We could do another hour easy in our sleep. A friend of mine does four hours of radio, and I thought, man, you know, four hours, woo, you know what they do? They repeat hour one. <laughs> They ain't doing four hours of radio. They could sandwich my show in there for an hour. Or do something tricky. Nope. Anyway, what are we going to talk about? Trump numbers. Trump numbers. Rasmussen, Rasmussen Daily Report numbers, whatever you want to call it. 44% of likely U.S. voters approve of Donald Trump's performance. 54% disapprove. If you believe those numbers, by the way, they say that's an improvement. If you believe those numbers, you're a brain dead leftist moron. Latest figures include 28% who strongly approve of the way the president is performing and 45% who strongly disapprove. Gives him a presidential approval rating index of negative 17. President Trump's actual uh, index is probably positive 17. And I'm not trying to be funny about it. It probably is. I don't believe the polls. Donald Trump, look. And, and I know we are in a bubble of sorts because we're like, man, did you know he did this? He did that. He did this. And they don't know it. And I know there's a lot of negative media, but there's also a lot of people that go, I don't believe the media. I don't trust the media. I believe if Donald Trump ran for reelection right now, he'd rebeat Hillary Clinton in a landslide and he'd beat any other opponent you'd stick in front of him. I believe that wholeheartedly. Guys, Good. All right, let's move on. Emotional squirrel support. Have you seen this story? Which one of you guys got me this story? This is a funny story. I liked it. And I'll tell you why. Who? Who's to, It's kind of like, who can tell you who to love? So here's the, the gist of the story. It's out of Florida. And a guy wants, has a support animal, you know, one of these anxiety animals. And instead of it being an anxiety dog or a cat, it's a squirrel. A renter is fighting an eviction from a Clearwater con- a condo over his pet squirrel, Brutus. Ryan Bowling, Bolin has claimed that under the Fair Housing Act, he should be allowed to live with this squirrel because it's not just any squirrel. It's a therapeutically necessary squirrel that brings him emotional support. Now, the act says that even in no pet buildings, Landlords are required to make, quote, reasonable accommodation to allow pets who serve as an assistant animal, including assistance in the form of emotional support. Boylan's pet squirrel was discovered by property managers when a neighbor's dog drove it up a tree. So the jig was up. And long story short, he told the management team, this is a squirrel that I've got through my physician and the the squirrel is, you know, helps me get through a tough time, post-traumatic stress. And he got a letter from his physician that says, yeah, he does suffer from PTSD. It was an automobile crash. He he wasn't in the military that resulted in herniated disc in his back. And so his doctor writes, writes to him to help alleviate these challenges and to enhance his day to day functionality. I prescribed Ryan to obtain emotional support animals. The presence of the animals is necessary for emotional, uh, mental health of Ryan Boiling because its presence will mitigate the symptoms he's currently experiencing. So either this is one heck of a squirrel. Who knows? I'm just saying he's got permission to have the squirrel. He rescued this squirrel from Hurricane Matthew. So they have a tight bond. But hey, if he wants a squirrel, this is the way I look at it. Dogs and cats We've accepted these as our normal day-to-day animals. Some people now are trying to be exotic, so they got iguanas and snakes or whatever. But a squirrel, to me, works. Roger Goodell's under fire. Yeah, let's see. So the Dallas Cowboys, it's mostly been Jerry Jones that's been going after Goodell. He probably looked at his salary and went, are you kidding me? And then he looked at the results of what's been going on in the NFL and he says, we're losing. We've got a guy who's watching who's watching this league go down the drain. And 
and he still wants more money. Now they claim that they offered Goodell, he wanted, I think we talked about this the other day, $50 million in his health insurance. I thought that's a strange request. You know, why not ask for $51 million for life, but $50 million. They say, uh, here's from Breitbart. He, they say Goodell tacitly acknowledged the damage done by the, uh, the politicization of football and remarks delivered uh, just the other day. Please come to our stadiums and be entertained and have fun. Not to be protested to. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He says people. Not please. I thought he was begging. <laughs> people come to our stadiums to be entertained and have fun. The commissioner noted not to be protested to. The remarks came as part of Bloomberg's uh, the year the year ahead summit and reflect the recognition of a ratings decline and criticism from some sponsors. And though Goodell held up hope to learn from the concerns of the players, he reiterated his desires that they stand for the national anthem. I think that's one of the things I think when we have a platform the way we do, people seek to find that division. I think that's something we try to resist. Goodell explained of the protest. And in this case, I've been very clear about this. The anthem, the respect for our flag is very important. So I want to see our players stand. Now, that's nonsense. It's nonsense. Roger Goodell could very simply issue an edict that says you will stand for the anthem or you'll lose four games. You'll get a four game suspension. If you do it again, you'll get an eight game suspension. If you do it again, you're out of the league. Done. We're not even talking about this. This is why I don't like I don't like these guys. He doesn't even have the guts to tell you what he's really doing. Hmm. One of the few people on the planet who could actually do something about the NFL protest, but he's paralyzed by fear. The man has shirked his responsibilities. The commissioner is supposed to be a steady hand. He's supposed to drive the league in the direction he wanted to go, and he's done it. The inaction could cost him his job. And this comes from Breitbart as well. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones seeks to stop the National Football League from extending the contract of Commissioner Roger Goodell. I told you guys a while back, there's no way as an owner you could look at the performance of Goodell, watch how he capitulates to the players, sells out to PC nonsense, all at the sake of the owner's money as he gets paid over $200 million since he's been doing the job Highest paid dude in the football league. And I'm talking about bigger money than the Super Bowl giant, uh, Super Bowl winner, winning quarterback. And you think that the owners don't notice this? Shoot. New York Times and ESPN's Outside the Lines both report Jones hiring superstar lawyer David Boyes, attorney for the defendant in Bush v. Gore, for disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein, and for, yes, Roger Goodell's NFL in an effort to block Goodell's contract. The, the Times said that Jones said in a conference, um, a conference call of six owners, the, the, those of the Chiefs, Falcons, Giants, Patriots, Steelers, and Texans, that legal papers were drawn up and would be served this Friday if the committee did not scrap its plans to extend Goodell's contract. See, Jerry Jones is smart. He's going, this is a business. And we're going to straighten his business out. And he's not thinking about it for this year. Jerry Jones is written off this year. The year is because he got one of his players, his best players got suspended. I don't watch football, so I don't know of this stuff uh, through the grapevine. But I know one of his best players got suspended. Now, he wants to win, but he's not worried about the, to this year. What Jerry Jones is watching is the trend line for the NFL in general. And if your sport starts to lose its swag then it doesn't pay you to be a billionaire owner of a football team if nobody gives a crap about football they buy these teams not because they plan to make money money's a good byproduct they want to have the you know the swagger of being able to say it's my team jerry jones might be the best businessman ever he's certainly pretty good at it i it, for, uh, for all you know indicators on my side of it of things i don't follow his businesses very much but he seems to be good at it. I think the market cap of the Cowboys has doubled since he took over, so he's pretty good. And he was a very wealthy man before that. So he's good at it. But what he also knows is that the trend lines for the for this aren't good, and it doesn't matter how good he is at this. This is beyond his control, and he's trying to get control of it. And I think many of the owners, 
Some of them are, you know, Cronky, for example, he's worth $30 billion. These are toys, but they're expensive toys, and they want it to be, they want to have bragging rights. When football drops below soccer, there's no bragging rights. When the, more people watch the WNBA than watch your football games, there's no bragging rights. These guys want to win. They want their, their franchises to do well. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.